Neil, congratulations. That was a heck of a cop tie. Yeah, I thought first 20 minutes was really open. I mean, they normally play a diamond, they changed to a back three, so we took five, we worked on the diamond all week and then took five minutes just to, we know how to play against a back three. Um, but this game was still open, they're very brave. You can see how many goals they've scored in the league. They, they bomb people forward and they make runs and uh, we, we got a bit stretched. Too many people coming out of holes they shouldn't have been. Um, but we took the lead and then, and then rode our luck a little bit and we could have gone probably two up at one point. Um, but yeah, I thought in the end the game got kind of overtaken by uh, three officials mm. on the pitch. Oh, but first of all, the performance, what pleased you the most? I think we won the game today with sheer heart, guts, um, incredible energy and fitness to, to keep going. I mean, I think Connell had cramp in his calves and his hamstrings <laughs> in the end. We, and he said he was looking over at the bench and me and Coxie were laughing um, <laughs> because we could just didn't know what to say to him. Um, we couldn't do anything. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the boys put their bodies on the line. I thought Joe McDonald, although he had a, you know, a couple of dodgy kicks in, in on the pitch and in the wind, I thought his actual goalkeeping performance was, was, was outstanding as well. So sheer heart, guts and energy. Looking at the individual performances, they put everything on the line, particularly at the end there. It tells you a huge amount about your team, but I guess you know that anyway by now. Yeah, I think I do. Um, and, you know, something that we we talked about a lot last season when, when things weren't good. Um, I hope that the fans who have made the effort to come today are really, really proud of what they've seen. That's, that's a group of players out there giving everything for a shirt. The red card, Wes Thomas, 37 minutes into the game, you were right on top of it, you saw it. Was it a red? Um, I think you can claim it's a red because uh, I think Wes's trailing arm has caught him in the face. He's made the most of it like you do. But the refs probably missed the first part where their guys got him round the neck and thrown him out of the way and Wes has tried to react to that. So it's You're not this... overly enamoured by the referee's performance. I think I'll leave that for you guys to, to talk about because I think he lost control of the game. And um, you know, in the end, what happened was two aggressive teams trying to win a game of football ended up taking their frustrations out on each other and that's when the game got a little bit bitty towards the end of the first half and, and I didn't think it needed to be. Damien McCrory went off with an injury and it looked like a severe one. It doesn't look good. Um, you know, if the, the guy's landed on his knee while it was in a bent position, so he's ended up, it could be his meniscus, which isn't good. Um, it could be we, an end of the season, do you know? We don't know, yeah. We, we don't want to make any assumptions, but obviously, he, you know, with us down to 10 men and no more subs, he would have carried on if he could. So we had to spend the last, whatever it was, 20 minutes with nine men. I know it's early days and full time has only just come around, but with that injury, with the other injuries that you're carrying as well, are you immediately thinking, you know, we might have to strengthen again, we might have to go and get another body or two? I think so now. Um, you know, Dion and, and Brins did great in the fullback positions, but you know, we do need some some extra uh, bodies in now. Obviously, losing Ben as well and, and and stuff like that. So yeah, I think you know we probably are going to have to bolster the squad. Just finally, the quarterfinals are up next then of the FA Trophy. When everybody entered this tournament, nobody was massively into it, but as you get ever closer to Wembley, are you starting to come round a little bit? I think so. I think when you've got this far in the games and at the rear range, you know, it's another midweek game now, we've got to play along the way. I think um, when you do that, then then you might as well go the whole way and, uh, <laughs> and try and get yourself to Wembley. So, um, you know, this was probably the tired around in many ways as far as how competitive it was and, and the level of the teams. Um, just disappointed it didn't have the match officials to match it. Appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you. So many things to ask you about. Um, first of all, um, Wes is obviously sending off a th subsequent three game ban. Does that mean you're going to have to go out and get a striker now? Again, it's another problem that we've got to face, so we'll, we'll look at it all. Um, but yes, it, it's, it's something now we're going to have to look at. Um, we just at the moment <laughs> we keep winning games of football but you know sort of around it all it, it's been a bit of a nightmare what did you say to the players at half time after the dismissal and you obviously you had a bit of a tactical reshuffle what was the message yeah just you know when you're down to 10 men you know we we got a certain way I like to play when we're down to 10 men but I didn't think today was the right way I thought they were too aggressive with the way they attacked and put bodies in the box so we just thought we're gonna have to defend a lot of crosses let's go to a back three Obviously brought Brins on. Um, unfortunately for Shieldsy, it could have been anyone that come off. But when you need to play three in midfield, um, obviously one of the wingers had to come off. And um, you know we thought give it 15 minutes, and then you know we'll have a look at Rosie and Kyle, people who would suit the type of game it was going to need to be in the second half. And then when it went down to nine, <laughs> what was your message then? Could you get a message onto the players? To be fair, we had to ride our luck at that point. Um, I thought Macarin goal was was outstanding. Um, two centre halves as well, you know, with their defending. But at that point, we had to go four-three-one. 
when we won the ball, when we lost the ball, we had to drop Kyle in almost as a 10, um, like a four diamond with no strikers. Um, and it was a case of we knew that they would get in down the sides and get crosses in. And it was whether we could defend the crosses. And I thought, by and large, they were man mountains. Um, I mean, you've been an experienced manager. Have you ever experienced a win like that where your backs are against the wall? Um, I've had one or two games where it has been like that. But to be fair, you know, it was going to be tough enough with 10 with them coming on to us, but to go down to nine was, was pretty ridiculous. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you just hope then that extra centre-half in there to defend the crosses isn't there and you hope the boys can see it out. But, you know, what I saw there, I'm very proud of. What are they like in the dressing room? They're really, really... Are they too tired to celebrate? Yeah, that, they're, they're, no, they're over the moon. They really are because they knew the game was going to be tough. They wanted to win. They, you know, it's not one of these, well, it's less than the amount of games we're going to play in the future. They want to win every game. Um, but the way they did it, I think, you know, it was just, there wasn't much quality out there from us, but it was just sheer, you know, heart and soul. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud and I hope the fans are. Um, yesterday, or Julian, on the week, there was a story come out through Sunderland. Um, I don't know if you're aware, Tom Sloan's the new executive <coughs> director there. Um, said that Sunderland could be sending players to Notts County as part of a unique link-up because he knows the owners. Uh, is, what do you know about that? And is there anything you can tell us? Um no, I don't. I don't. I, don't. Um, I think, you know, as always in football, these things can get blown up. But I think, uh, you know, like always, we're always looking to network with people and talk to people because you never know. You know, there might be a really good player somewhere that you want. And I'm sure Sunderland have got a few in their ranks. Um, so conversations obviously happen where, you know, we, we've, we've had a discussion with them, but not as far as setting up a almost a B team or anything <laughs> like that. I think it was just, you know, you, you know, we any good players we would be willing to have a look at and you know run our eye over and see whether they would they would suit us and, and obviously that's been blown up into into something different but that's the same with most clubs we're constantly looking I mean the work that goes on behind the scenes as far as player recruitment and looking for players to strengthen us is is really really impressive so how did those talks go I mean obviously good by all accounts um, yeah I think it's just yeah I think it's talks that you know we've said we'll look at their their good young players and and you know that's and I think we're a big club with a good fan base and it's an intense place to come and play so players would learn a lot so but that goes for any club it could be West Brom it could be anyone that that we we uh, you know we end up having talks with and and links with so I wouldn't blow it out of proportion but I'm not ever also going to say we're never going to have a player from Sunderland because uh, you know there's a few on there that that we've we've looked at before how many players would you like to bring in because obviously you've got a hectic run in now haven't you mm-hmm. Yeah, I think obviously um, getting Doyley back and with, you know, Damo doesn't look great and Zoom's not great and Sam Slocum's not great and Ben Turner's not great and, you know, Wes for three games now, it, it, you know, it will catch up with us. So we'll, we'll have a look. We've got to dust ourselves down and then just sort of probably try and find out where Damo is. But certainly, you know, we probably need a fallback now um, and maybe a, 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 it's time to move on a centre forward. But um, everywhere else, I'm really, really happy with. Um, special mention for Tom Crawford today is another start for him in his competition. He, he was outstanding, wasn't he? The second half, the amount of running he got through. Yeah, great energy. And that's we always say to the boys when you're not in the squad, that's why we have to work you hard. That's why you have to do extra running to keep your levels up. So to, to get through a game like today, um, the way he did against a very, very good Yeovil team. They weren't by any stretch kids. They put out a strong team and, you know, like us, one or two that hadn't had a game played. But there's some experienced players out there and we've come through it. Uh, obviously the draw, home tie, surely? Oh, I mean, nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, we'll just uh, we'll just wait and see. It's uh, Now we're in this stage, it's it's just one of them where you think, you know, you're, you're not far away now. So um, whatever happens, we'll embrace whoever we play. We'll give them the respect. And, uh, you know, like you say, you're only a few steps away from, from a Wembley game now. Uh, and just a final mention on your two centre-halves today. I mean, Connell Rawlinson was absolutely outstanding. I mean, Alex was equally as good, but Connell, second half, he was just outstanding. Brilliant. Yeah, they were, and we knew it was going to be one of them. You know, we we knew we'd only have brief moments of possession. So, like I say, a lot of games we control and we have good possession and tempo. Today, we had to spend a lot of time without the ball, defend our box brilliantly, and um, like I say, anyone who's an Ox County fan who's not proud of them today um, shouldn't be watching football. Can I just ask a quick one on the funds, Gaffer? Incredible following, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we made a joke on the way here that, you know, we might get traffic because of the, su- the amount of support that's going to be here. But, um, you know, when we come, I was I was actually really surprised how many were over there. And, you know, sometimes different football matches throw up different 
uh, emotions in a game and they knew you know uh, from the second half really that it was backs against the wall and them being down the same end as our defence was was crucial because I'm sure they were they felt like an extra body today. And it'll go a long way towards the momentum of keeping this squad and the fans together, won't it? After that three nil fantastic victory against Chesterfield last week, for these fans to come down and see that performance, it really keeps the bond close, doesn't it? Yeah, like I say, if I'm a Notts County fan, well I am because I'm manager. If I'm a Notts County fan. Um, I go away extremely proud of what I've just seen. You know, it's nothing to do with football. That was heart, soul, commitment, and that's, as a fan, that's really what you want.